Hi, David Vizard here, and you are watching Powertech 10. Spare me a few minutes of your time, and I'll give you the benefit of my 60 plus years of building race winning engines. In this episode, and that will be whatever we show in the corner there, we're going to deal with uh, the flow testing of Richard Holtner's Chrysler Turbo Chrysler head. What we will be showing in this episode will be the principles that we're going to use and the flow testing of the intake port. We'll do the um, uh, chamber and exhaust port in their own separate issues because there's enough to uh, uh, show in each one to fill a video. One of the things I need to say here is that I had to somewhat reduce my ambitions on the modifying of this head. Mostly because I realized that there might be more to it than meets the eye and I really needed one to section up to uh, take a look and see how much metal's there. That said, uh, I think if Richard wants to go ahead and do a super trick one, then if we can find two heads, one to work on and one to saw up, then I can accommodate that. Hi, if you were watching the previous uh, half of this video, you'll know I had to uh, make a stop due to some uh, uh, issues I had to deal with. Fortunately, they're all done and under the belt, right? So here we go with the second half of this uh, high-tech porting video on Richard Holtner's turbo heads. Well, here are the results of the intake flow test. Our peak flow is up to 208.9 from 181. So we've picked up uh, 19 plus 9, 28 CFM, right? Which is uh, over 10%. But peak flow numbers aren't the whole story. They're only just a fraction of it. The way we can see all this best is to look at the graphs and compare these figures with the ones that we started off with. Well, here is that graph. That's where we started. This is where we're at now. Notice we have made gains all the way through, probably up to about here. It's the result of tidying up the seat. Right, what I did was I cut a much better seat form there and I uh, um, narrowed down the seat to about 65 thousandths and blended the underside into it. Right, nothing super trick, just a nice radius into the seat, other than the fact that this is a 39 degree seat and this is a 45. Here is our discharge coefficient. And I just remember, that's a fancy way of saying flow efficiency. As you can see, we made a distinct difference in the flow at low lift. Now, I think I mentioned this before, but it appears that even this one's a low figure. It should be up here somewhere. But it appears we have a little ridge at the top of the seat, and I think that's causing it in both cases. But we'll see how that fares when we do the chamber. However, let's go and look at this. Our 39 degree seat is hovering around the 0.78 or 78% efficient mark there. And it's better all down here. Now, all of this here is because of a better seat. But as we go down this curve here, it's a better port. 
When we get to this point here, which and this is our 0.25 D mark, you see this 0 0.22, 0 0.264, right? It takes off and it takes off very steeply. The efficiency going back up to over 70%, whereas this barely made 62%. This is all due to us getting a good bias on the port, i.e. that Detroit lean I told you about. During our reshaping of the port, it obviously got bigger. And though it flows more, has the flow offset the increase in volume? Well, here are the two curves for the port velocity, right? At low lift, our more efficient seat meant the port velocity in this range was slightly better. However, when we went up here, the gain in our efficiency was less percentage-wise than the uh, gain in, in volume. So we lost a bit of port velocity there. After we got past this mark up here, we picked up a bunch. Now, this here could well disappear when we re uh, reform the chamber because I suspect over this range here, we are having some uh, shrouding problems of the intake valve, but we'll see when we get around to that. Of course, the true test of this, that is the port energy, is whether the flow went up more than the volume. Let's take a look at that now. Here is the port energy. If we don't lose any port energy during our modifications, that's good. But it's even better if we gain some. The original port wasn't bad, and you'll see that we're just slightly under here with what the original port is. But from uh, about 320 lift, it just pulls away. I think Richard's going to be lifting the intake valve to somewhere here. So we've gained all of this port energy and only lost this little bit here. So this, as is, should be a uh, good horsepower port, but we've got more to go yet. Remember earlier I said swirl was important? And the fact of the matter is that this style of cylinder head that we're dealing with tends to favor swirl at the expense of flow or flow at the expense of swirl. Now that's not a universal law, but it's pretty common. Anyway, here's where we're at. This curve here is as the deal came out of the box. This curve here, which barely shows is where we are now. So we have lost a whole bunch of swirl. So that's going to be one of our goals is to make it back. We need to see it up around here somewhere at least by the time it gets to mid lift. Let's see if that's achievable. So why a 39 degree seat? It presents area to the cylinder faster and it makes the valve look bigger at low lift. But it's not just a case of just doing a 39 degree seat versus a 45. But I'm going to talk about seats uh, in an upcoming um, edition here. But suffice to consider the fact at the moment is the 39 degree seat inevitably flows more, maybe for about the first 150 thousands. If we went flatter, say to a 30 degree seat, it'd flow even more. But the downside is, with a very shallow seat, is they tend not to seal up as well. But again, we'll talk about that in a, uh, a valve seat um, uh, uh, video down the road. Let's talk about where all our swirl went. On the stock port, we had kind of a bulge here in the casting, right? And we have more space this side of the valve guide boss than we did this side. So there was a tendency for the air to flow easier round like this than it did here. And also, the short side turn wasn't working very well, so we didn't have air 
much air coming out here. So the predominant flow was across the port and around like this, but only at high lifts. That's when the flow around the short side turn absolutely failed to make it, right? So most of our air was coming out from about here round to about here. Now, when I ported it, and all I did was to first principles, because I don't know how thick this casting is, I just took out enough here to, between the guide boss, which is going to be there, to allow an easier turn for the air. And the way the casting was shaped, right, the bowl at the back here was quite a, a lot bigger than the valve as we see there now I also took a lot off this wall and made the port very much straighter like this also I got the short side deal flowing so now although we got more air coming out of here there's also a lot coming out of here and what's coming out of here is just enough to deaden most of this here in terms of flow Right, we've also got flow coming out and going around the short side turn, so it comes out this way in the chamber, going here in the port, past the valve, and comes out the chamber this way. All of those moves, uh, in terms of reshaping the bowl, increase flow, but they also dampened out swirl. So the next thing we've got to do is to find that swirl again. Now it would appear to me that we can get more air out of here because the, the valve is slightly shrouded here. So cutting this away in some sensible form will do that. Whether we'll recover all of the swirl still remains to be seen, but we will pick up some. We need to find all that we can here. Well, that about wraps up what we've got for you as far as the intake port goes on what essentially is going to be or could be our stage one head here it kind of depends on what Richard wants to do next as far as the heads go our next video on this will be how to do the combustion chambers on a head where shrouding is present and we want to minimize that shrouding so look out for that now my last request is Please subscribe, like, and notify. Help me support your speed efforts by helping me get more and more subscribers and viewers here, right? I know there's a lot of people still don't know about us.